Good afternoon. Welcome to the Harrisonburg Rotary Club. Once again, I'm thrilled to see tables full and the room buzzing with energy. And so I hate to quiet the crowd, but we will start by doing our four-way test of the things we think, say, and do. First, is it true? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will the bill be the will of better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? We have the privilege of being led by Lynn in My Country Tis of Thee. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Now let's turn to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ken Horst, would you lead us in the prayer today? Let's pray together. Lord, as we bow our heads and pause in this moment of the day, we're going to think of things that are constructed there that we're grateful for. We thank you for the good food. We thank you. We thank you for the chatter around the table. And in a world that is filled with war and division, thank you that we can be a part of Rotary where we attempt to think of others before ourselves and do things that are constructive and for the benefit of others. Help us to be effective Rotarians. Give us creativity and a desire to help brothers and sisters around us who have need. Thank you for uh, this program today. Be with the person that gives the input. We thank you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As, as Dan comes up, um, I want to again just acknowledge that we are thankful for so many new members. There's more being inducted uh, in the coming weeks. But also thankful, I see a lot of Rotarians that are coming back that we haven't seen as much. And uh, yeah, it's just great to see both happening. So Dan, come up and tell us about our guests and visiting Rotarians. Good afternoon. Um, we have three guests today. Um, we have Katie LaPira, who is a guest of Quentin Callahan. Quentin, you want to say a few words? Yeah. So with me today is Katie LaPierre, who's been with us before. She used to be the executive director of the Rock Creek Education Foundation, and she is now the coordinator for community engagement and recruitment yeah. at Rockingham County. So the two big programs that we do with the uh, Economic Educators Award and the FFA, the Ag Award, <laughs> uh, we want to have a lot of involvement with Katie and her office. So she came with us today as a potential member. Well, Katie. Yeah, right, right. We have Jillian Lynch, who is our speaker. We'll introduce her a little bit later. And we also have Keenan Moore, a guest of Wayne. This is the last meeting with Keenan as a guest because he's been approved as a member. So we look forward to getting hearing Keenan's thumbnail sketch and induction here in a couple of weeks. So welcome Keenan again. And uh, before I launch into announcements, anybody have any family of Rotary items they'd like to share? I do have, I do have one um, I just thought of and stealing thunder, but Mark Callahan is back today and will be honored by the uh, MS dinner this year, which is quite an honor. So uh, thanks uh, for being here, Mark, and what a well-deserved honor. So we'll celebrate with him later this year. Uh, as we look at announcements, um, again, we're doing really well with service hours. Michael announced that we've exceeded 2,000 hours. Keep logging your hours. Um, we are still looking for some board candidates, so I'll keep doing that. And uh, 
we're getting very close, but we still have uh, are looking for some those that are interested in joining the Harrisonburg Rotary Board. We'll in, induct four new board members at a meeting sometime late March, and we'll get that sl those slate of uh, candidates before you soon. But uh, we're still accepting nominations, uh, including the one that Braden volunteered last week. But I won't mention his name. Uh, so the Rotary Conference is coming up in Roanoke. Uh, so again, March 3 to 5th, so there'll be, I think, four or five of us, maybe more. We'll look forward to reporting back to you um, on how that conference goes and what we learn, what's going on in the district. So also one more quick update. You've been hearing me talk about the success of membership and it has gone really well. Uh, we'll be inducting Keenan. We have others that are in process right now. I'm guessing now it's approaching 12 to 15 new members since July. And Gary Nichols, for years, glad you're here today, Gary, led an orientation process. And Robin Newpower has agreed to lead a team of people to revive the orientation. So new members, be looking for an email. Maybe coming up, the first opportunity could be actually next week. But we're going to throw out a couple of dates to uh, really get our new members plugged in and learn about Rotary. So I'm excited. Uh, that that'll be up and going. And a guy that always is willing to be surprised is Noe Yoder. Tell us about the next service opportunity sure. coming up. Yeah, absolutely. Come up. Your voice carries, but either way. Okay, yeah. So, um, Mercy House is, we are, our fundraising campaign for this year is going to be redoing our playground and play structure area at our shelter. <laughs> that playground has served us for well over 20 years, and it's now it's getting to the point where we need an upgrade. So in March, on March, I believe it's 11th, <laughs> the second Saturday in March, which I believe is the 11th, and I'm about to confirm. Yep. Yes, at, we're going to do it at 8 a.m. Um, Rotarians, we're asking you to come by and help us deconstruct the current playground. So it's BYOT, bring your own tools. <laughs> However, if you do not have any of your own, we can definitely get you set up. So if you'd be willing to contact me, email either me or Wayne, um, just to give us an idea of how many people are available. But we need to take down that structure before we can put up a new one. So thank you. Yeah, so this is one of those um, big opportunities to serve. Uh, yeah. You know, we've had a couple smaller ones. We've had two or three, and that's been great. But I'd love to see. 10, 12, 15 uh, folks come out and really bless uh, the Mercy House. And also, before I turn it over to Rodney to announce our speaker, I want to give one thank you. It's good to see Mal back. Mal, past president, longtime Rotarian, generously offered some prints for the Rotary Conference for a silent auction. So really appreciate that. And uh, they look great. And so we'll report how all that goes. Uh, we'll report back from the, uh, from the board. Um, from the conference coming up. So that's that's plenty for today. Rodney, come tell us about today's speaker. So we are pleased today to have uh, Jillian Lynch um, with us. She is the managing editor of the DNR, and that is a relatively new position uh, for her. She became the uh, the editor in January, but she's not new to the area. She was uh, a student at James Madison University where she graduated in, uh, in 21 and wrote for The Breeze. Uh, after that, she joined the DNR and was a, a feature reporter uh, starting in 21 and now has become uh, the managing editor as of January of this year. So we look forward to hearing what's going on at the DNR. Welcome, Jillian. Jillian, um, is that PowerPoint coming? Yeah, I'm gonna okay. go over here. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> funny stuff today. So. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'm Jillian. Uh, as you can tell, I'm very young. 
Um, <laughs> but I'm glad to see there's a lot of a lot of uh, there look like a lot of young people in the in the in the group today, and that's that's exciting. Um, and and lots of young at heart people as well. Uh, All right. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. So I'm a graduate of JMU. I studied international affairs. Um, I've been a passionate journalist for a long time. Um, elementary, middle, and high school. I've been I've been in journalism editor roles. Um, and I came to the Daily News Record right after graduating from JMU and got hired as a features reporter and um that was an interesting experience because i just walked in the front door of the building not knowing exactly what to expect i didn't really know the daily news record because i'm a native of fairfax virginia um i didn't know what role it played in this community so went in not knowing anything um met the managing editor he told me to send in my resume and it ended up being one of the most amazing experiences in my life getting to cover um, the features in Rockingham County. I've ridden in a, I've been in a DC-3 airplane um, at Dynamic Aviation covering, you know, D-Day. I have been in people's homes um, and it's just been awesome. So I've really fallen in love um, even more so than I was as a student at JMU with, with Harrisonburg. And the opportunity came about to um, apply for managing editor. It wasn't something that I just did. It, the position was open for a long time. Um, and it was clear that someone needed to step into the role. Um, and it took it took a lot for me to do that, but it's it's been great so far and I'm super excited. So um, can you go back to the first slide? Perfect. Um, so I just wanted to give everyone an update. I don't know how much everyone knows about the Daily News Record, just kind of what's going on with us. We have this really sweet building at 231 South Liberty Street um, that's pretty ginormous if you've ever, ginormous, I'm young. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but we had an in-house printing operation until about in mid-October of last year. Um, our printing presses have been scrapped for parts. Anyone who subscribes has seen our coverage. Um, the paper is now printed in Frederick, Maryland, and it gets mailed back down here. That's at the Daily News Record. We have a lot of interesting logistical um, puzzles that are fun for our circulation department. Um, the organizational structure, we hired a new publisher. That's Sherry Keys. There's no, um, there's no caption, but the top image is Sherry Keys, our new publisher. She came on in January or so, and um, just keep me posted on time. Just, okay, there's a clock. <laughs> okay. Um, she came in in January and has been great. And then I started in um, like a month ago. And there are three main departments. So as managing editor, I run the newsroom. There's a circulation department and then advertising sales. So um, basically, I'm telling you, don't ask me circulation questions. <laughs> um, the newsroom is its own puzzle. And then so Sherry, our publisher, oversees everything. And then the person that I'm most excited about on this list is the one without a picture. Victoria Young is our new news editor. She's a graduate of Chapel Hill, uh, UNC Chapel Hill. She's worked in book publishing and newspapers. Um, most recently came from a small paper in North Carolina. And she and I have made an awesome team so far. I've learned so much from her. I'm very much a features um, reporter, which means a storyteller. I'm creative. Um, and I like to get to the nugget of, you know, why you're telling a story. And then Victoria is very news oriented and good at developing sources and being professional and using associated press style and things like that. So it's been a great team. And we can move on. I didn't bring the remote. So That's thank you. <laughs> um, this is a printing press being scrapped. So we have this giant, um, I don't know what to compare it to. It's a printing press Goss Urbanite. Um, I got to see the last run of it in October. I cried. Um, it was it's it's the most beautiful thing if you've never seen it it's really a mix between 
human artistry there this machine can't run without people physically touching um its components uh i think this one was built it, this is 1940s technology i think we got it in 1970 um and it ran through october of this year so some of the parts went to other papers um other parts i think were just scrapped and then our inserting machine also went to another paper um our paper is owned by a company called Ogden Papers. It was purchased from a private family, the Bird family, in 2016. Um, and Ogden owns a number of similar sized papers across the country. So some of our equipment went to those other papers. And you can move on here. Um, when Ogden purchased our building in 2000, or our newspaper in 2016, they sold the building. Um, so since 2016, Matchbox. Realty has owned uh, the DNR building. We've leased it. And in April, we will be moving to the south um, component of the building. So the part that looks less like the daily news record will be in. Um, we have still have our whole giant newsroom and a wonderful conference area advertising space. Um, just without the printing press, we have a ton of footprint that we do not need. Um, the the building it, as a whole is kind of like a museum right now so there are a lot of exciting um updates going on painting and reflooring and just it's going to look a lot nicer in there which is great for um not only our staff but also the people who come in and so you can go to the next slide um so that brings me to our goals and i say the people that come into our building um the thing that's most exciting to me is that the publisher, myself, and our news editor are very much on the same page about what we want um, for this paper. I got to see firsthand like how amazing our community is and how those stories need to be told. Um, and we still have this sweet, very central um, footprint in our community at 231 South Liberty Street. So we want to I mean, be that paper that we've always been, but I think in the past few years, maybe it's been lost just with the pandemic where we are a place for the community. Um, we want to build that engagement. There's so much going on. It's not a challenge to find what's going on in the community. It's just those pathways need to be made um, where it's easy for people like the Rotary Club or the members or the other organizations that you're in to communicate with us and let us let us help you. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about opportunities for that. Um, our other goals are the so three main goals. The first one is that community engagement. The second one um, is building our staffing and freelance network, just driving value added journalism. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about what that means. And Tell, telling as many local stories as possible. So getting those faces in the paper of people who actually live here. I don't know about you, but I am sick of seeing like representatives, governors and important people on the paper and not just every day, you know, the other 50,000 people that are being represented by that individual. Um, so you can continue. Okay, so actually, can you go back to the previous one? I'll just talk a little bit more on the goals um so just with community engagement i specifically wanted to talk to you guys about one thing because this is the rotary club uh, we are reintroducing our free community calendar that's something that we've had in the past but for whatever reason in recent years hasn't existed every friday we run um completely free a list so I'll say we have club notes on Monday. I'll talk about that separately, but just as an aside, this is more for just you all to take out into the community and to consider um, this community calendar. And we run the schedule of events for the following week listed by day, um, and it's completely free. So if you know an event um, that's going on that's of interest for um, like a news or arts or entertainment kind of purpose, um, we're reintroducing that free calendar. Club notes are on Monday. Um, I'm sure I received club notes from Rotary. Um, those just come in Sunday evenings and we post like updates on your um, 
agendas from meetings and then photos or any other events that you all completed during the week. Uh, that's our club note section. If you have any questions on that, let me know. Um, and I'll make sure that I send some information along to Rodney to pass along to the club as far as subscriptions and uh, community information. Um, and yeah, we're growing, we're aiming to grow our staff. That's if, if anyone is looking for a job as a part-time crime reporter, let me know. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and telling those local stories so we're our resource come to us um for for telling those stories and then you can go to this last slide here so the impact of those goals we hope is growth um more subscriptions means more resources resources for us which means better storytelling um and more more uh more going to our subscribers in general um, our market is really cool. I love the mix of ages here. I love the fact that Harrisonburg has three, at least three universities. Um, the thing that attracted me to this area as well is our, is our um, refugee population. It's also something that led me to study international affairs. Um, so reaching those parts of our market as well as our old school, um, you know, our old order Mennonite community that maybe doesn't read a physical or sorry, doesn't use a computer um, and needs that physical paper. And just the idea of telling these community stories, building our staffing, that's going to drive this idea of value added journalism, which is just a fancy way of saying telling stories better with linking other resources, leveraging our um, website, using podcasts, um, kind of just being very dynamic with the way that we tell news and then keeping our principles that have always been there, integrity, telling the truth, um, and, you know, advocating for issues. So with that, um, I'll just open it up to questions. If you want to ask any, that's, that's fine. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening to me. I really appreciate it. I have a question. <laughs> Jillian? The birds, um, um, yes. the birds on the newspaper, when I submitted an open forum, they were published. Since I've been as on the newspaper, my open forum submissions have not been published. Who makes the decision to make that? That's an editorial decision. And I will say, since I've been on board, everything that we receive gets published unless it has, you know, it's got a profanity in it or something that we just can't run. Um, I'm super happy to say that our editorial page has grown a lot, even in just the month that I've been on board. We're getting a lot more open forums submitted because people know that they're gonna get run. There's been a lot of exciting dialogue about the Bluestone complex, um, gun control. And I think it's a really something that is so important about local papers is that they, this polarized view of issues and that's something that we see in our open forum and editorial page is more nuanced opinions on issues that are either local like the bluestone complex or local legislation and then even bigger issues that affect the nation so that's exciting to see but yes if you submit an open forum it will be run <laughs> and apparently you guys clean up your language yeah <laughs> Oh, thank you. Okay. I'm very nearsighted. <laughs> thank you. So you had mentioned that you all have excess space in the building. What are the plans around that? Are you looking to repurpose sublet or is it purely for adding new towns to the PMRT? So Matchbox owns the entire building. We lease our footprint from them. Um, we're going to be reducing the amount of space that we lease from them. So that extra space is going to be, I've heard that it'll be like, brewery space for pale fire to start maybe some cool retail so 
all these spell, yeah. Yeah. We had a day where timing. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Is important. Yes. How can you, with having a newspaper printed in a location further away, keep it so that the the paper is telling, also giving announcements of news before it happens, and uh, right, right. There's another question that I'm I'm reaching for, and that is, uh, is there a way of reducing the e subscription? From being as close to what the the uh, hard copy is, for example, I was used to getting the hard copy in the morning um, within the Harrisonburg limits, and uh, it is now coming in the afternoon right. when it comes, and uh, that's kind of a, a challenge that I guess you're working with in the news in the news. Absolutely. Um, okay, so the first part of your question, that whole yesterday's news tomorrow issue with our deadline um, is something that we've really been looking at. And it, you know, we could have before this change, we could have a reporter working on a story up until 8pm the night before the story was going to run. And now that's a much earlier um, kind of thing. And yeah, we have a 630 uh, absolute drop dead deadline for the paper the following day, which has been interesting. Um, and that is going to force us to we are already relying more on web. So those late stories where we have a reporter covering a meeting at 8 p.m. or even 3 a.m. on February 14th. Um, <laughs> those are going to be going online um, at all hours of the day. The circulation issue with people getting i don't know if I, i'm a newspaper person i know i'm young but i want that paper with my morning coffee and i think everyone does it's it's the newspaper and it's the news for that day um it's critical that that's happening and our circulation department is working um working on their system i believe there's a component with the postal so it's being put in the mail system and people in the county, it's just not working very well. So, <laughs> so that is something that has to be, you know, figured out. But as far as the things that we, that's something that can be changed, I believe, um, and needs to immediately. The thing we can't change as much is the earlier deadline. But with that, I think it's a really good opportunity to build um, our online presence. And that leads into your second question, the subscription. Yes, I believe it could, that could um, be improved. Something I also want to look at is the paywall. Um, right now, I think you can look at like five stories per month before getting locked out. Um, and that's, that's honestly an Ogden era kind of restriction. And I think it's just unnecessary. So give us, give me, um, you know, some time, some of these issues like I said, go into those circulation departments, those advertising questions. Um, so it's very interesting um, to, to work with, but those are concerns that we are hearing and I'm excited to uh, continue working on. Okay, I have, I have a question. Um, our Rotary Club, does a scholarship program, and it's a very unique scholarship program. I know there's a lot of folks that do, but um, because it's based on service and a lot of big things. And because I chair that uh, committee, um, would you be the person to talk to to find out the process? Way back, the paper used to send someone to our to our presentation and take pictures. Then they wanted to do press release. You know, I've done press releases the last, well, at least three years, maybe even four, to never be able to get anything printed. Um, and I think if you're also looking at local stories, we could give you some really unique individuals that have done, I mean, everyone who has been to a scholarship presentation knows we have these students that do these just 
I mean, awesome, awesome um, service activities. And um, could, could be a great service story along with maybe some others and picking yeah. some top students. So, so the short is, would you be the person that would be able to tell me kind of what that process looks like so that in advance this year, I can make sure we have everything in line? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah, those are, that is definitely something I can do and I'll plan to send along my information um, so everyone can have access to it and give some kind of guidance on the community calendar club notes and um, just those feature stories or press release related things. But yeah, absolutely. We, we're super interested. Yeah, that'd be great because we just had, I think, the outline of what your expectations and needs are. Yeah, it's gravy. Yeah. Over here. Hey, Julie. Hi. <laughs> you mentioned that uh, you're young, and it might surprise some people in this room, but I'm also young. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, and I think you and I can sit in similar chairs. I think we both have an appreciation of the intrinsic value, especially of, of locally sourced print media. I. I really enjoy it. You mentioned the cup of coffee with paper, love that tradition as well. How, how do you see print media moving forward? Because I think you and I, as young people, also have to face the reality that most of the folks our age aren't reading the paper anymore. How are you combating that? Are you navigating that? Um, very interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah, um, and I want to mention, I know Noah through an awesome network called the Shenandoah Valley Young Professionals Association. Um, that's an exciting network of people early career who are doing really big things and getting involved in the community. Um, and it's awesome to see people closer to my age making an influence. Um, as far as print media, a lot of young people do um, enjoy it, but I, obviously, obviously it's not a primary um, source of information. It's, it's different. Um, I believe in print media. Um, I don't I'm old school. I just am. I, so I personally, you know, I think there's a way to make a daily newspaper work and it, it does work now. Um, but moving forward, it's going to be a more dynamic relationship between that print edition and our online um, content and just kind of intermixing. I love looking at news in different ways. I like video, I like podcasts, um, I love to read. Um, so meeting our readers where they're at and meeting their needs. I think everyone wants good news um, in addition with strong you know, journalism and reporting. Um, so I think if we continue to just tell the stories that we need, um, the, the delivery method you know, may change um, but I, I don't see print going anywhere and it'll just be supplemented by other things. That's my viewpoint. All right. Andy? Yeah, I've got, I've got one uh, question from Zoom from Yogi oh. Gillette. I read the DNR online. I prefer the old method of reading with an app. What happened to force using my new on the go? That's a great question. I didn't know that existed as a reporter. Uh, <laughs> so that's something that I, I think going off of what I just said, meeting our readers where they're at. Um, I've heard of this app and it's it, it sounds like it's something that we just need to like reconnect in our system. So that could be an easy fix. Thanks, Yogi. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, go ahead. One more and I'm gonna, I have one to end with. <laughs> I also believe in print journal. Like I, I believe in having a good paper locally with locally sourced stories. Um, and I, I guess my, my I'm wondering what can we do as community members to support the paper? Yeah. Um, as we can. <laughs> <laughs> Electronic only or in print. Yeah, um, we just had an open forum letter, which is 
an opinion letter from someone in the community come in and it, it was all about buy subscriptions to the DNR. And I had to try really hard not to put that as like our front page story. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't, but um, that aside, like it's really up to us to do the work of making that easy, making it easy for you. Um, so as we continue to do the work of making buying a subscription to the DNR an easy decision, um, just keep, keep, um, I guess, things like this. I'm just grateful to everyone being here. Um, yeah, buy a subscription and reach out to us, you know, for stories, if you have an idea um, that makes our life easier, send us press releases and, and um, you know, my team is as enthusiastic as I am to cover everything. So thank you for that question. Thank you. I'm gonna end this with uh, a comment and a question. We have a legend in the newspaper business here, Dick Warren, uh, for years. So my question is going to be, I don't know if you've met Mr. Warren before, but you should afterwards for sure. I'm going to meet after. Okay. <laughs> so my question is for both of you, currently, roughly, revenue stream from subscription versus advertisement percentage-wise, and Dick, what did that look like 35 years ago? What, what What's the roughly, do you know? This month it's been good. So advertise, it's very low advertising to subscriptions. That, first of all, currently, what's your, okay, what's so your guess? Currently advertising makes up a good chunk, uh, especially at our paper. Um, I, I think it's like 30 and 30 and then I, I'm not sure though. 30% from advertising. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Is that similar Dick, to what your days were? In the beginning, when I first came here in 1980, the ratio was 50-50 because on Friday, for example, we published 64 pages. Wow. Uh, now, now 16 pages, 64 pages. 18 of those pages were classified. Right. So, uh, but as time went on, the ratio changed very well. Increments of like 45, 55. At the end, uh, when I uh, retired in 2000, it was 40% advertising and 60% news. And you really, really start to build in the paper by the amount of advertising you had before you even put the news in there. So, yeah. When I left uh, in, uh, in December of uh, 99, uh, Circulation was 33,500, but now you're a little over 11,000. Yeah. So, but that's not a that, that's a market problem, really, really. The, I mean, the, <laughs> I was teaching at JMU as an adjunct professor. I always sample the students, and out of the class of 35 students, they three would read a newspaper. And guess what that was? The breeze. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that kind of hurt, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, how do you get the new He said, that's uh, what they have television for. <laughs> you know, so anyhow, I'm sorry to not for it. Now, that's exactly what we wanted to hear. And uh, that's the time we have today for today. Thank you so much. <laughs>